Well, the Glazers have gone ahead to pile more pressure onto the Qataris, that is Sheikh Jassim Al Thani and Sergio Mrakliff, the two contenders that want to take United for good as a club on their own. Welcome to United Matters channel. We are talking a little bit of Bruno Fernandes and then later <clears throat> we are going to discuss a little bit of what United is all about but all and that more is going to be based on to the updates coming in from the Financial Times. We are having story coming in from Brighton and very many others. That's why you need to keep yourself in the know onto this channel which goes by names of United Matters channel. How are you guys and where you watching us from? I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that you upload in here on a daily. Now, <coughs> We know that today we are playing away at Nottingham, very big game, but we are having some other two games ahead of us that are so much important. If we are to go into our next round of the semi-final and final respectively in the UEFA Europa League and the FA Cup, we need to win those games. And guess which team we are playing next Sunday after playing Sevilla? It's all about <clears throat> it's all about Chef, it's all about Brighton. Brighton is the team we're going to be playing at Brandon's team we are going to be playing at Wembley. That is next Sunday after the game we are going to play against Nottingham Forest. Next Sunday we are going to be playing against <coughs> Brighton. But as for us, we are having Lisandro Martinez out, um, Rafael Veran out, Rashford out, Ganacho out. We've gotten some news coming in from. <coughs> We've gotten some news coming in from <coughs> from uh, Brighton and Hove Albion correspondent known as Andy Naylor, he has told us that Evan Ferguson and Joel Veltman ruled out of Brighton's FA Cup semi-final against Manchester United at Wembley a week from now. Remember, all these two players got injured in the game that saw Brighton beat Chelsea by two goals to one. That happened at the Stamford Bridge and obviously they beat Chelsea. So, <clears throat> those are two big blows because when you look at Evan Ferguson, most of you know him. He has gone ahead to score close to six goals in the Premier League and he has been really a very powerful vessel of <clears throat> he has been a very good a very powerful vessel of De Zabi, and I think it's a very huge blow for De Zabi. Though they went ahead and really won that game of football, but obviously those will act like huge knocks or huge blows for the team of <clears throat> Brighton as you really face them because Veltman is a right back that has gone ahead to play 27 out of the 29 games that Brighton has gone ahead to play, meaning that the manager De Zabi needs to improvise on what he's going to do onto that wing to see to it that he really finds himself in a position of really getting into a replacement to really do as a patch or a backup for Veltman. Evan Ferguson, you all know him. He's a young man who hit the Premier League stage, stage this season when Dezabi came in through and he's scoring for fun. Even today, he missed out onto a goal after his ball rattled off the crossbar and it came back into play. So it shows you how important this player is for the side of Brighton and you wouldn't like to really see him not start <coughs> The game of United or going to the game of United without having Ferguson. What shows you that he has gone ahead to really improve a lot. He starts ahead of Danny Welbeck. Though Danny Welbeck scored the equalizer today for Brighton against Chelsea, but you understand that he's a very good player. But those two are out of the FA Cup semi final that are going to see Brighton play against Manchester United. So it's really going to be so much. <clears throat> so much a relief because Evan Ferguson is one of those players that has hit the Premier League running this season ever since Deza came in through scoring goals for fun and I think I found it very important to come in through and really bring you that story because you deserve to know <clears throat> what this is all about and uh, after that <clears throat> we are having a story that came in from Miguel Dilani about the takeover of Manchester United. Miguel Dilani told us the following that <coughs> the auction of the Manchester United <coughs> is poised to enter its final stages with Kyle and US Hajj fund Elliott management seen as the favorites to acquire a minority stake from the Glazers family. Manchester United are now seriously considering a minority investment with Calica Group Incorporation in talks. The US private equity giants are believed to be ready to make a major investment now <clears throat> i don't believe in these stories that these people are really coming in through to the need for really putting more money because the money that is needed by the glazers 
to get United where it's supposed to be is really huge. Can they really go ahead and really put it up? And I think they're just trying to really pressurize the likes of the <clears throat> Sheikh Jassim Al Thani and uh, and uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe to really raise the six billion that they want because after that story of Elliot came in through, another one from Financial Times dropped that the two final bidders for Manchester United are under pressure to prove they can actually complete a deal should one be struck with the Glazers seeking higher offers in the next and final rounds of the process. So there is there is pressure I'm mounting and it's not news that there is pressure because anywhere you see two people vying for something there has to be pressure but for the glazers they've gone ahead to pull more pressure onto these people by really trying to sort by really trying to really show them that <clears throat> investment is really looking okay and everyone talking about the investment i don't agree with it because the glazers first looked for investment and they couldn't get those investors now why is it that those investors are coming in now to me i'm looking at those people like the Elliots being used by the glazers to skyrocket the price of Manchester United. They want 6 billion and Sheikh Jassim Al Thani is offering them 5.5 billion pounds with Sajim Imraktif offering them 5.2 billion pounds. That means they want more. And how do they get that more? They want to really see these people getting in money from the Qataris. And I think all these stories we are hearing are not really based on to on to truth. They are based on the Glazers wanting to go on and really get in money and obviously take off from the club because they don't have money to run the club. Again, the Financial Times has told us that the Glazers are inviting higher <coughs> offers from the bidders with British billionaire Shaji Jim Ratcliffe and his Ineos industrial camp up against Sheikh Jassim Al Thani, son of the former Qatar Prime Minister, to buy one of the most famous clubs. The Glazers are also considering proposals from a range of investment funds including Elliott Management and Cal Group which could result in the family retaining ownership of Manchester United. So, for <coughs> the first one, that the Glazers are really inviting higher bids and offers from <coughs> Sheikh Jassim Al Thani and Sajim Jim Ratcliffe, that's a fact because the Glazers have gone ahead to call in for third bid because they want six billion. If no one raises six billion, I think they're going to call in for the fourth bid. That's why Sheikh Jassim Al Thana is going to have to confirm that he's going to put in his bid before the 28th because he believes that if he takes over that club before <clears throat> the start of May, then it will be easy to back the manager of Manchester United known as Eric Ten Hag. But when it comes to the second one <clears throat> of Glazers considering proposals from a right head of investment firms, that is that is that is a lie that is a lie they can't take what we call minority investment glazers are having close to 69 percent shares at manchester united let's round them off to 70. now if you're having 70 percent shares of the club of manchester united and you are calling in for six billion pounds for this club six billion um 69 percent so <clears throat> that means that for every 10 <clears throat> that for every 10 um that means that means that for every 10 percent shares they'll go for close to one billion pound <clears throat> not so so, that means if the Glazers are getting the money they want, they should sell close to 20% 20, 20 of their shares. That means they'll be at 49, meaning that they won't be the majority shareholders again because you must be having 50 plus for one to be a shareholder. So, a majority shareholder, meaning that even if they get in those, those shares and they get to billion pounds, Will that be enough to run the club of Manchester United? Because United is now sitting in a debt of one billion pound. So I don't see it happening that way for the Glazers. And I'm seeing a very hard way for them to really get in an investment. Because if they wanted an investment, they would have called for that only. And they've given the rain group a priority to discuss with those that really want to do what we call a full sale. Because 
for once in a lifetime they have a chance to sell United and obviously gain close to six billion pounds. I think they are prolonging this because they want to see how we end our season. If we end the Champions League, we've won the UEFA, we've won the UEFA Europa League, we've won the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, I think they will tell the, the bidders that please, do you see the team that we are leaving you with? It's well prepared, we're having a very good manager, he's winning in those trophies, so go ahead and really finance the manager and you're going to get the best that you deserve. So to me, it comes to my understanding that the Glazers don't want investment. They first looked for investment because they first went in for they first went to Qatar and they wanted them to buy some shares in Manchester United and they said no. Whoever they approached to buy some shares in Manchester United turned down their request and said no, we are not going to come in through and really finance that. So as it stands, it's really ugly for the Glazers. They're only left with an option. Selling. Two billion pounds won't be enough because <clears throat> They'll only go to the stadium. What of the facilities at Carrington? What of injecting money into the club, like buying in players? So, I don't see them staying here because there are a lot of things I've not yet done for the club of Manchester United, and they are really doing a great job of really ruining this club for not selling it before even the summer transfer window. Because you never know, after Liverpool pulling out in the race of Judy Bellingham, if we had the Qataris that had, and had taken over the club, they would have gone ahead to really deliver those players to Eric Ten Hag, you know? <clears throat> so, it beats my understanding to see that the Glazers are really trying to pile more pressure onto the Sheikh Jassim Al Thani and Qataris, yet they know the truth that all they want is 6 billion. But let's wait and see what the final bid is going to be from Sheikh Jassim Al Thani. Now, Bruno Fernandes, to me, I take him the captain of the Ma Manchester United, has gone ahead and will reveal to us the following about Manchester United. He said, I've told the coach several times that I'm here to help to be a solution, not a problem. Whenever he needs me to play in the different positions, he knows I can do it. I want to help the team. If I say something to someone on the pitch, it's because I think they can do better. Sometimes I support them, but you don't see it on the pitch. You see the arms flapping, but that doesn't mean we are complaining. That is Bruno Fernandez for you and really giving us a very huge snippet about Manchester United and the players and his captains he and I think was reacting to a question of as to why, how, how he feels when Ten Hag played him as a CDM remember in the game of Newcastle <clears throat> game of Brentford and the game of Everton he played as a central defensive midfielder alongside Scott McTominay and very many others so as it stands He's revealing to us that he's ready to put his body in the line for the club of Manchester United. That is something that you should hear from any person really that loves to be at the club of Manchester United. So guys, thank you very much for watching it through. Tell me your thoughts about more pressure being piled onto the Qataris and, she and Sheikh Jassim Al Thani. So to it that they really raise the amount of money the Glazers really want by throwing in a story that the investors coming in from, the, from America that the Glazers really want to talk to. And then there is that... Iraq moment, not Iraq. Where, where is Iraq coming in from? Then there is that Bruno Fernandez moment on why he is doing great and being played in very many positions. And your thoughts about Evan Ferguson and Veltz being out of the semi-finals of the FA Cup down at the Wembley Stadium that is next Sunday. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and I sign out for now. See you later, my Muslim friends. Ramadan, Ramadan.